Oh my god, look at the babies. Oh, oh my god, god, oh my god, oh my god, the babies. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. god. Oh my god, oh my god, the babies. I guess this is the reason that we're here. Look at the babies. They came yesterday afternoon. Oh, oh my gosh. Yesterday afternoon. It looks like there's seven of them. These That's 770,000. Yeah, another 70,000. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Did you say oh, wait a minute. We ate just born yesterday, yesterday, so. Yeah. <laughs> 50,000. 50, That's cool. Ah, what the hell. <laughs> but uh, these pigs, uh, they're very good at having babies. Uh, they'll eat just about anything. This field right here, let me just talk about feed real quick. This field looked like that field over there six weeks ago. Wow. So that's how quickly a field like this will grow up with whatever we seed into it this time of the year. Uh, you might be noticing that a lot of what's in here now would appear to be weeds. It's uh, lamb's quarter is what it's called, but I really like it when it grows. So when it happens, it's okay because the pigs like it. Right now, they're preferring to eat the field peas that are over on the other side that didn't take too well over here. Oh, sure. So their bellies are kind of full. But when the field peas run out, they'll go to work on this stuff. This will be completely cleaned off, just like that one over there. By the time this is cleaned off, that field over there will look like this. Because we just seeded that as soon as we moved the pigs the other day. All right, so these guys don't need any help from us as far as having babies. Um, she'll go in there and she'll make a nest, uh, <coughs> even if it's freezing cold out. We've uh, farrowed in January, this past January, on another field, a different group of sows, and uh, they did just fine. They really don't need any help from us. We give them a little bedding because we feel bad about it when we're in our warm beds, but they really don't need it. They usually have between six and eight babies. This gal had seven. And it looks like that one right there in front of her, she's going to go too. She was probably laying down getting ready to make her nest. But we kind of scooped her up. But is, there a time of, is there a time of year that they um, tend to have them more than um, others? or just if, if, we, if we allowed them to, to go truly feral, they would only farrow twice a year, and they would farrow in the spring and in the fall. But because they're not feral, they're behind fences, we have a boar in with them all the time, one boar, and uh, it does deaden a little bit of the natural um, instinct in them, just because they're, they're here and we're feeding them. Like, they don't have to work nearly as hard living here as they would if they are in the woods. That's, that's another reason to, to dispel the notion that if these pigs were to get outside of this fence that they would take to the woods. It's just ridiculous. I mean, if, if you were a homeless person, would you go live in the woods or would you live near a restaurant, you know, that you could scrounge out of the back door? You know? So they wouldn't go to the woods. That's kind of, that's made up. That's for public consumption. So there's, uh, there's 10 sows in here. The other ones are castrated males. And the idea is that they live together in a family unit. We take the castrated males out as uh, beef, I mean as pork. So we, and the way we like to do this is we like to come in the pen, just like we did this morning, with a 22 rifle, very quickly, cleanly, bullet right between the eyes. It knocks them out, they go over, stick the knife in them right here, they bleed out, it's quick. And it's not a bad way to go, I guess. But we like to say that they only have one bad day here at this farm. Because these animals are, are born here and then they will die here. So that's not so bad. The other way is we got to load them up, put them in a trailer and take them to a butcher. It doesn't really work out that well. It really doesn't. If a person calls and they want one pig to load up one pig, take it to the butcher, it's a lot of running. It's much better if we can just slaughter it here and, and cut it up and give it to them that way. It's traumatic on the animal too. Yeah. yeah. Do you retail your stuff here? Yes. Uh, over here at the house, this is the, the dormitory house. We, have, we conduct classes here, anyone can farm classes. Um, there's a store over there. Uh, you got to be a member of the farm. 
because it's a little bit of yeah. legal <laughs> legalese, but you can't. Be a so how big do you get them before you uh, butcher them? Well, like the one we did today was about 200, mm -hmm. but for uh, other purposes, like for charcuterie purpose, purposes, like when we're going to make hams and mm -hmm. prosciuttos and things like that, we like them to be about. How long does it take before they'll get that that weight? How many? Oh, about you know. two years. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. Which which goes against the grain of industrial ag because right. they they feel as though they need to get them out in six months. Right. And I explained it this morning, but the difference between an animal that is two years old and an animal that's six months old is is really profound. It's like the difference between a an eight year old boy and a forty year old man. You know, the, the muscle groups change. Some develop. That a, that a boy wouldn't have a man with. So, you know, that's what we're looking for in this in this animal is the muscle grouping, and we also need the fat. What happens if they get sick? Uh, if it's really bad sick, they die, I guess. Do you control it at all or help? It depends what it is. When we first brought these animals on the farm, and that would have been Oh, I guess 2008. The, the stock that we got was sick. Mm -hmm. They had a cough. And we didn't know what it was. We called the vet in. They took blood, stool sample. And uh, I really don't remember what it was, but we got some medication. There's Judy here. She's our vet. I don't remember what it was. And then she gave us some medication. We put it in their water. It was a powder. Never had it since. And so since you've had pigs come in from the outside, they don't really get anything. They don't get sick. These ones don't get sick. If we were bringing pigs in constantly mm -hmm. from the outside, you bring in stuff with them. But these guys, we line breed, so we have, occasionally we'll bring in another boar. Like that new boar, that black one there, we just brought him in. <clears throat> he came in from Maine. Um, if we bring in a boar, that's for his genetics. That's one animal, quarantine him for a while. He came off a family farm, he was outside, he was healthier than he left there. I know the woman, he was able to be careful. Does that answer your question? What do you do in the wintertime? Because you can't clean the engine then, though. What do you, do you have a couple on the field to see your hay, or how, how do you do that? No, they just, they'll, They'll finish up, what What will happen is I will plant, I'll send them to that field next in about six weeks, put them over on, and then I'll replant this with turnips. Oh, oh, okay. And the turnips grow really good in the cold. Oh, you know, sure. They'll get this big, they'll be all split and wormy and stuff, but yep. the pigs don't care. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So uh, the pigs won't be interested in the turnips until it gets really cold. And then they'll be out here digging and it, you know, there'll be this much snow and they're still digging turnips. Hmm. They don't care. They lay in the snow. They really fur up in the summer. They're shedding right now. You can tell their sides are going to be real smooth. But in the, in the winter time, they are hairy. Like that guy there. A little bit. Yeah, the idea with these hogs is they're not supposed to get any corn. That's the idea. Because corn's cheap, usually, and it makes for cheap fat. Yeah. And with these animals, uh, you know, contrary to like a 4-H pig, we want fat pigs. 4-H pigs, they want these lean Arnold Schwarzenegger looking pigs. <laughs> but the flavor's in the fat, mm -hmm. for sure. And, you know, we use a lot of fat. We render it down to make lard out of it. And my wife cooks with it. And it seems to make everything taste good. <laughs> <laughs> We're told that fat's bad, it's delicious, but bad know. fat is bad. But good fat is good. It is. So if we use good feeds, like small grains, they haven't been genetically modified for the most part. I guess they have now wheat. But we use uh, rye and barley and oats, and they're not genetically modified as far as we know. Yeah. But they don't get a lot. Like, they're not getting any today. They didn't get any yesterday because they have all this green out here. People lived on fats until they come up with crystal recently. Yeah. And they just go destroy it. Yeah. Well, your brain's made out of fat, 
and your brain cells are dying, you've got to replace them with something. Mm -hmm. So you need to be taken in fat. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 